Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Assalatu wassalamu ala asrafil anbiya al mursalin Alhamdulillah uh, We meet again today Friday afternoon, Friday night For the series of uh, Believing the uh, the pillars of uh, if, if The pillars of iman right? And we cover all the five Beliefs and this is the last belief Alhamdulillah, the house is packed today. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to address it to you then. Alright. <clears throat> and today, uh, probably we, the, the, the topic that we're going to cover today, which is the belief in the decree of Allah, uh, might not have a lot of things that we need to share. Uh, probably, but probably we won't ha take probably about half an hour or something. And uh, you have some questions for me, right? Inshallah. Inshallah. All right. Okay, so we start. Bismillah. All right. Today, uh, tonight, we're going to cover a few things. Uh, as I you probably know uh, me, I always start with the definition. And then we're going to talk about then the uh, level of faith. And the third topic is the types of takdir or the, the qadr. And some of the misconceptions about the belief uh, of uh, in the decree, and the last one is the most commonly questions. Some of the questions actually, uh, exactly put in our poster and the flyer. Some of the questions and about the decree. All right, let's start inshallah. So let's start with the definition al qadr wal qadr. We start with qadr. Uh, the word qadr, um, we have. But 63 times mentions in Al Quran, and for example, I think everyone know this. Wa uh, izaqada amran fa inama fa inama yakulu yakulu lahu kun fa yakun. When Allah has already decreed something, then Allah just says kun and fa yakun. Be and and it be, and it is. So it's about 63 times in Quran. And linguistically, it means uh, ordained to be has been completed as decided. As Allah has already decided to do that, uh, Allah has already uh, ordained to something to happen. And then, technically, what it means is the Allah creations on uh, by His will. Then the second topic, uh, the second one is a uh, qadar. Qadar. <coughs> Uh, mentions in Quran about 132 times and I think everyone know this about 44 times alone is Al-Qadr in Allah ala kulli sa'in qadir so that's what the, the same uh, the, the same word in, uh, verily Allah above, above everything is has a will or has a, has a power or has a, has ordained linguistically it means control <coughs> is a power over something and his plan to have that to happen. And technically, that means his will before, so before the existence of, of things and creations, Allah has will something that is Qadr. Right, summary is uh, the Qadr and Qadr. Um, I found uh, the, the discussions about that. It's not explicitly mentioned about Qadr and Qadr, but is uh, the reference to that is um, we found it in, in hadith, in Quran, that what it means by Qadr and Qadr is sometimes it, it means the same thing. That sometimes Allah has decreed based on His knowledge and based on uh, what, he is, uh, what He plans to happen for uh, all His creation. Alright, the second topic, because it's going to be related, the law of Mahfuz. Uh, law of Mahfuz is only mentioned once in, in the Quran. Uh, the word laws, uh, the word lauf itself, six times in Quran and only one times as a lauf mahfuz. What it means is something like a flat surface of wood or tablet. While the word mahfuz is the same root as if you know, like the word hafiz. Right? Hafiz al hafiz is one of the Allah's name is to preserve. Right? 
that is about 44 times mentioned in the Quran and what it means is guarded you know, Allah revealed the Quran and Allah guarded the Quran so that means uh, Hafiz means guard so the law of Mahfuz means a book where all the decrees of Allah are kept protected from any creation that means we human uh, any creation in that matter have no access no is no access to to this book all right so let's start with the levels of faith when we have the faith of the decree of Allah we start with the knowledge what it means is we have to believe that Allah knows everything Allah knows everything in on earth everything on heaven Allah knows everything how small it is even the atom and zara we mentioned and how big it is the planet and everything Allah knows whether it's hidden or there's witness well, Allah knows uh, what's in the uh, what's in the inside the uh, in, uh, under the sea uh, in everyone's heart Allah knows so that is the the, the, the first knowledge of in Allah this is one of the uh, one of the uh, we look at the uh, the study about Tawhid Rububiyah uh, is Al Alim Allah knows uh, what is the reference to that is the Surat Al Hajj uh, Surat number 22 seventy. Walaikum salam. Alam ta'lamu anna Allahu ya'lamu ma fi samawati wal ard. Don't you know that Allah knows? Allah remind us. Don't you know that Allah knows ya'lamu ma fi everything in uh on the heaven on earth. Inna zalika fi kitab fi kitab kitab in here is the law of mahfuz that we mentioned. Uh, the hadith the, the mufassir mentioned the kitab in here is the law of mahfuz. Inna zalika Allah Yasir. That is very easy. So uh, everyone's have name Yasir, Muhammad Yasir. I know uh, some Indonesians by the name of Muhammad Yasir. Yasin is means easy. Yeah. So that is the reference. Allah knows everything, and then what Allah knows, Allah put that in the book. That is the second part of it. That the definition of that that Allah. We have to believe that Allah has written everything that He has decreed into this law of mahfuz, or in English it mentions a safe tab tablet or preserved tablet, law of mahfuz. Nothing that has happened and will happen except is already written. So one of the, the first creations of Allah is this column, is a pen, and Allah ordered the pen to write. The pen asked what to write, write everything that is going to happen. So that's what we believe. What is his reference? The same reference is Surat, Suratul Hajj, uh, verses number 70, that we mentioned. Say, Don't you know that Allah ya'lamu ma fi samawati wa Allah knows everything? Right. The third one is the will of Allah. The second levels of faith, or the third levels of faith is uh, the Allah's will. What it means is we believe that Allah's will, Allah's decree, encompasses anything and everything and everything happens only if Allah will it to happen so if everything wants that to happen and Allah does not will that to happen it will not happen and the vice versa right, everything only happens in the permissions of Allah if Allah wills it so that is the third level the first level we know that Allah has that knowledge secondly Allah written that knowledge into a preserved tablet and number three the, the third belief is that that the everything that has happened everything that will happen right is Allah already knows and Allah already written it on the book so the reference to that is Surah to Zumar verses uh, 62 63 Allah who Allah who khaliq, uh, kulli sayin. Allah create everything so that means when Allah created everything, so Allah knows everything, and Allah will Allah knows what will happen to this all this creation. Is it me or is it hot in here? It's us. It's us. <laughs> Usually I get freezing in it sometimes. Too hot, lah. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a bit warm. Not not hot, it's a bit warm. Probably I walk as well, or just because the the kebab that I had for for dinner, <laughs> not the kebab the. Yeah, I had this uh, the raw slam or something so it's a bit warm now 
anyway where are we okay we mentioned about the 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 uh, the level of faith uh, lastly is the Allah creation what it mean is that we have to believe the same dalil that we we, we just read before that Allah is the creator of all things so in to summarize that that Allah before the start of the existence of the creations Allah has a complete knowledge right the next step is Allah put everything in the tablet right the preserved tablet and then Allah with his will and with his command create the the creations right so that means whatever after that happens Allah already knows right so this is where sometimes uh, I get questions sometimes. Well, he already knows then what happened. So we'll come to that, inshallah. Alright. Now, types of qadr, types of takdir. So what has been decreed? So the first one is what we call is the original one. The original one is whatever written in the law of mahfuz. What's wrong with my hang? Oh, it's hang. It's mine. Yeah, I need to... Can we? Where will we? I have everything. All my not in here. I didn't. I didn't prepare the. Ah, okay. It looks good. So we are here. Oh, we have discussed this now. The type of. Okay. What is the original one? The original one is, the sahadith. It is actually quoted in the, uh, the in this poster, for for this talk is the decree of Allah. Allah has written that decree the fifty thousand years even before the creations of heaven and earth, right? And that is an Sahih Muslim that is mentioned in uh, in this poster. So I'll just put it here. So this is uh, Allah ordained the qadr, the uh, what is mentioned in muqadir in the creations of about 50,000 years before he created heavens and earth. So that means this is to explicitly mention that Allah already knows even 50,000 years what's going to happen to us. This talk that we're going to have, Allah already knows 50,000 years before the creation. And you looking at me like that, Allah has already written <laughs> 50,000 years before the creation of uh, SubhanAllah. What it means that everything is already decreed, everything is already written in the book, which is the law of mahfuz. This is not double F, it's actually double, a single F with double O. The second, the first one is the original one. Now the second takdir or the second qadr is what we call is a, a umri, a umri, which is the lifespan. What it means is based on the hadith, that the decree of Allah is written by an angel when the fetus is given soul about 40 days in our womb. So when we are in our womb, so before, before the womb has life, so Allah sent an angel. Allah sent an angel where we are still 40 days and during that time, during that time, there's four things, uh, three things that is mentioned. First of all, Allah has decreed what he's did, so what, what amal you're going to have, Allah has decreed that. And then the sustenance, so rizqahu. And then the death, so when you're going to die, so Allah already know, right just 40 days, when you start to have your life with the soul, Allah already knows, Allah already defined, uh, de de decree the, the amal, the risk, and then the ajal, and as well as whether there's going to be happy, it's going to be righteous, it's going to be blessed, is everything's already written. Just, so that means that is the second level of uh, takdir. We talk about the first level, which is the original one, which is the 50,000 years one. Right? And then the second level is when we start, when we start having the soul to the womb, then uh, this is what we call is the... So this hadith there, it's mentioned that just before... He ordered to write down, uh, Allah ordered the angel to write down his deeds, the livelihood, the death, as well as the whether he's blessed or wretched. That's number three. And the last one, the 
the last oh not the last one the third one sorry the third one is sanawi sanawi means annual so we have one fifty thousand years another one just before we give uh, we have the soul and the third one this happens every every year is the decree that Allah uh, write for the following year during the night of Qadr so I think uh, Surah Al-Qadr mentions uh, inna anzalnahu fi lalatil qadr wa ma'adara ka ma'alalatul qadr but the reference on that is Surah Dukhan uh, verses number 4 where Allah mentions uh, inna anzalnahu fi lalatul mubaraka in this case is the same as lalatul qadr and then the next the next verse is, is fiha Yufraku kullu amrin hakim that Allah has made this thing so every matter so what's going to come for the next year alright and as well as yep so what has de- decreed is everything within that year is what makes sense as a uh, it has what it means by hakim here means that decision is already pure based on wisdom the wisdom of Allah and secondly what it means hakim hakim means have two meanings one hakim is means something that from something that's the hakim was for judge the word hakims can be hikmah which is the wisdom hakim can also be something like the judge so this is based on the judgment of Allah and the wisdom of Allah that is already been given for every year so every year during the Latul Qadr so there's another decrease being revealed all right and even uh, there's there is a narrations uh, from uh, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu uh, some of example is a death for example and so whether that year someone will die or whether that year someone uh, has a new life whether that year what is the sustenance look like for that year as well as even whether that year is going to where it's going to rain and which part of the rain and so on and even to the level that someone someone is going to do hajj and so on so that is the the uh, the um the tafsirs of ibn abbas about uh, this particular decree and then the daily one the daily ones so allah decree that is applied daily uh, the reference to that is surah rahman that means every day Allah looks after and uh, all the affairs of his creation for example is to give life to put someone to uh, to uh, to take life to give sustenance Assalamualaikum to grant supplication so Allah grant supplication on that day so anyone who has um, make dua so Allah grant that so it's another decree that Allah that Allah gives and then Allah also gives those who ask uh, this is some of examples and accept tawbah so this is the daily decree so we have the qadar or decree that is one so all of four the decree that happens 50,000 years before the creation the decree that Allah gives before we came into into this life, the decree that comes every year, and the decree that comes every day, right? Every day in a sense of like give life, give sustenance, and kulla uh, min huwa fi san. Allah every day is, He says in, in the tafsir, Allah every day is busy looking after His creation. So. All these four decrees, the base one will never change, right? However, the decree that happens on the Umri, or the decree that happens annually, which is Sanawi, and the decree that happens daily, which is Yaumi, that might change. For example, an accident is bound to happen, but someone make dua. And because of this du'a, Allah accept it, then the accident does not happen, right? So that is Allah changed that decree for that, for, for that particular year or particular day. Uh, the reference of that, it's actually so many hadiths uh, about, about that, that uh, du'a changed the, the taqdir. So someone, uh, for example, uh, Allah has ordained on that day 
that he is probably on that year that he's supposed to die and because he asked Allah to to grant more and then and so he can do more amal and Allah decided to change that so on that day so that is the the decree that is changed however this is the key word here all this is already written in law of mahfuz right so that means you you will the first for example you ordain to die for example this year but because you make dua Allah uh, accept that and Allah give you another three years for example and all of this is already written in law of mahfuz so the law of mahfuz already written will not change so that is the, the reference everything here is just the reference uh, just the what you call as a daily orders and weekly orders like there's one the, the, the book that covers everything but then the decree comes what every year as well as every day so every year they're doing relatul qadar and every day for uh, for the acceptance of dua the toba and so on all right so that is we cover three things number one we cover the definitions about law of mahfuz and al qadar and uh, qadar we then we talk about the level of faith right the faith of that allah knows before everything then Allah who writes it down into the preserved tablet and Allah by His will create the creations and all the existence and everything happens from the knowledge of Allah. That is all the base. And we also cover about the level of faith which the first one or the level of taqdir or the qadar from the first one which is the book and then once before, uh, before the soul put into the womb and then the annual and then the daily. So this is the taqdir of Allah. Now we talk to the misconception. There's are two misconceptions. The first one, what has been referenced is Jabariyah. That means Allah already knows. Allah does everything. So that means we have no free will. Right? So this is obviously, this is a misconception. Because we are given free will. And the purpose of Allah, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَى لِيَبُدُ So that means we worship Allah. And that means we have options whether to worship Allah or not to worship Allah, right? We decided to come here today or tonight. We can decide to go somewhere else. It's a completely free will for us, right? So what happened is Allah, because of His knowledge, because Al-Alim, He knows that we're going to come here. He's already written that 50,000 years ago or 50,000 before the creations of heaven and earth, right? So Allah already knows. Now we decided to go here, Allah already knows. Right? So that is, obviously this is a misconception. And then, uh, for example, if a lot of examples are, I'm not, going, I'm not going to wear hijab, why? Because Allah already, already write that in Allah Mahfuz 50,000 years that I'm not gonna. No, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's actually uh, in correct uh, sort of uh, understanding. Let's go to the mall now and buy the hijab, right? If you on the way to mall, Allah give you like uh, struck you by lightning. Then Allah doesn't want you to wear hijab, right? It's very simple. And for example, uh, everything is already ordained to Allah. I don't have to do anything. Just give the guy a snap, uh, slap, or something, right? So don't you upset because Allah has already ordered this. So this is a, a wrong conception about um, about the, about the qadar Allah. The other extreme is qadar ya that means allah has nothing to do that we do our own we we do our best we just uh, we just get that word get that loan get that scholarship get that everything do our effort the best work 26 hours a day if you can right just to get everything allah does not know allah just watch right and allah does not know what's going to happen it's just all us of course this is a uh, is a complete extreme as well, right? So this is really, uh, this is the shirk of uh, Rubiyah, right? So Allah knows everything. One of the names, Allah is Al-Alim. Right? So Allah knows everything. So these two extreme Jabariyah, the, the first extreme is Allah already decide, right? So I have, I'm just, like in, like in the movie, I'm just playing, just dummy, right? Or the second part is, Allah does not know. It's completely up to me. Right? So this is again uh, a lot of lot of uh, thoughts and branches of other religion that come out other within this too. Three questions. Well, we finished very early. Commonly questions, eh? Okay. 
uh, hopefully I have already if Allah has decreed everything why do we need to do anything then this is that everyone will ask I think this is all the ask in the process as well I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> if Allah has decreed everything and if you look at this Allah has decreed this is the same as Jabariyah right so Allah has to why do I need to do anything now I I have an example I think Ustad Numan Ali Khan has a very good example to that um, I have my own example so, but let me just say what uh, Ustad Numan Ali Khan mentioned like for example so there is a there's a party that everyone wants to go to that party and everyone is so really really want to go to that party in order for you to, to, go, to, to go to that party you have only two options number one is the list of attendees that's already provided but no one knows what in, who's in that list Secondly, certain things you can do. A, do this. B, do this. C, do this. You have two options. You wait for the list being revealed, but by then it's too late. Or the second option, you do what's in the list. A, go and buy something. B, do this. C, do this. So you have two options. If you really, really want to do that, you go with B. A, you have no certainty, right? So it's no certainty. If you no know certainty, then you go A. The thing is, that is the one way of looking at it. The thing is, what we have discussed just now is telling you the knowledge of Allah. Allah is Al Alim. Allah is Al Hakim. Allah is the Wise. Allah is the But He has told us, "Alazina amanuwa milosolihat." We have to believe and we have to do good deeds. Right? That is the instruction. So two things. Number one. Is Allah tell you what He knows, but He also tells you what you do, what you have to do. What you have to do is worship Allah and do good deeds. Does not mean okay, I already ordained you, you just wait. No, that's not what Allah instructs us to do. What Allah instructs us to do is basically ya lazina amanu. So many things, yeah, ya lazina amanu amilu salihat, and so on and so forth. And I just. Just probably happened this what last year. I remember I I work uh, I work for Cathay. I work for an airline. So one of the perks of working in an airline is I get this free uh, not free uh, like a heavily generous discounted ticket, right? But there's a catch to that. That ticket, even though it's very cheap, like probably very good discount, but is a uh, is a non uh, what do you call that? Is a non confirmed ticket. Is a non-confirmed ticket. So if, for example, so if I go on a holiday for four of us, me, wife, and two kids, and going back to Indonesia, and we usually buy the, get this discounted ticket. What happened with the discounted ticket is, if during the peak season, because the load is very minimum, then we have to wait. So when we check in, we don't check in right away. We have to wait in the standby seat. And you can see everyone in the standby seat. They all look pale, right? They keep what's up? Are you gonna come out? We're still waiting. And then my wife talked to. Her. And at that time, I remember, we already booked a hotel and we're gonna meet with my father and so on. And uh, my wife is so distressful. And I get. I don't know whether we come. If we delay, then it's gonna be 24 hours after that. Uh, and we start thinking we sort of buy a, a full price ticket. No, we still regretting that. Then, just before I think twenty minutes, the gates already closed. So because what happened is, if they are connecting flights, uh, the passengers that is like a VIP passengers or passengers with uh, with uh, high frequent flyers program, they will get uh, priority, and we always get sidetracked. So just about twenty minutes before the aircraft, and uh, the the lady behind the counters give us the the ticket, just twenty minutes. And then we were just never before. We just walked there right directly to the uh, immigration uh, counters, and there was a very very long queue. It was uh, because it was I think December last year. It was the queue was so long, and I'm being the and I was a I was a husband of I don't know what to do. So, and my wife instantly she just went and said, went straight to the office of the immigration office. Sir, my flight is another twenty minutes. I have to go this because my daughter doesn't have, didn't have the, the Hong Kong ID card. She didn't have the Hong Kong ID card yet. 
she had to do all the cues. And if you do it all the cues in here, probably take another at least 20 minutes. It's just all long queue because it's a long holiday. And my wife is just yell and then with the with the with the tears and everything. I need to get my daughters. And uh, and the, the staff look at. Of course, I didn't know. I didn't know anything. My wife uh, did everything. Okay, okay, let me help. And he went there, just finished the the immigration office, and four of us running like we we as a family <laughs> never run like that. Like we really run. And then that was not finished yet. When we run. The door is actually already closed. So it's, it's already closed. The, all the passengers, all the paying passengers are already in. Right? And then they just let it in because the, the staff already knows that we, we're using a staff ticket. So they know, come on, hurry up, hurry up. So we walk in and we walk in into the aircraft. I can see all the other passengers looking at us. This guy must be shopping here. Right? <laughs> they, we have all the nasty looks and everything. And that's not the last part. You know the last part? I sit over there, my wife sit over there, my first daughter sit over there, and they sit. We just across everywhere, right? And and then when we flying, they think next time, if a pig isn't like this, we have to buy the ticket, right? It's just horrible. The feeling is just horrible. Just waiting, whether we're gonna get it. We keep asking the counter, is there any free seat? No, ma'am. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, no, probably you don't have. A, Really, it's really so that that is um, my my version of takbir, right? If you really want to go there, you have to make an effort. You have to pay more money, right? Because in here, if you miss to go to to Jannah, then there's no other place. You just go to Hellfire. So the only thing, if you want to, make, you have to make an effort to do that. All right. The second question. If I'm predestined to go to Hellfire, how is it fair? I think this same question, the same answer, basically, right? This is all uh, Jabariyah. That means Allah will have everything. Allah knows that we, that someone will go to Hellfire because of His knowledge, not because Allah never, Allah never do zalim. What do you say zalim in English? Eh? Manja Abul Hasan nanti falu asu amsalia. Allah never oppress, Allah never do His uh, grace and wrong, right? So when we has been, when someone has been written in Lauh Mahfuz that he's going to hellfire, not because Allah wants them to go to hellfire, because Allah knows that he will be go against Allah and he become kufur, that's why he become, go to hellfire, right? So the ayah that I mentioned before that if you do good deeds, Allah will replace ten. But if you do bad bad deed, Allah will only replace one. Right? Wahum la yuslamun. Then Allah never zalim, never do oppress to his slave. So that is all of this. At the end of the day, comes back to the first part of the uh, of the faith, which is tawhid uh, rububiyah. And believing that Allah knows, Allah wisdom, so Allah will never do zalim. Allah, so many things. Allah Rahman, Allah Rahim. That is all love, excessively love and massively love, right? And Allah, even uh, Ghafur, Ghafar, Ghafir, right? Allah, uh, Allah is for so much forgiving. So that is will not be, will not come under uh, whether Allah is fair or not. So that is the answer to that. Oh, sorry. And question number three, which is somewhat similar, but this is probably not about takbir. It's about if God exists, why there is suffering in this world? Did, has anyone asked this question? Yeah. Is it related to this? It is. It is? If God exists, this is about uh, atheism, right? Uh, the reason why they, they uh, reject Allah because they reject God because if human being like kill 10,000 people or one people uh, 10,000 or like kill the whole village everyone just this is just massive this is maniac how about if the earthquake who caused this earthquake if Allah created this earthquake if human can do that you call them nasty you call them killer how come how come some a being that called God will do that to human being right 
So this is uh, another another people another another question that people ask. The answer to that is, and again, this is understanding about Allah, uh, who's Allah, and when you when you measure things only, you cannot measure human, you cannot measure Allah in what is a human, right? And then you cannot only count what's in this dunya and not con- include this in the akhirah as well. So there is a narration of someone has been in this world for suffering and after suffering and after suffering and then and then we enter Jannah and after just one day in Jannah or just few moments in Jannah, how was your suffering or what suffering, right? So uh, if you just include that, uh, this is just the um, the wisdom of Allah that the test of the evil that comes to us, uh, other it's other what happens to uh, what happened to us from Allah, either it's purely good or there's a good on that a little bit of evil, or a little bit of sorry. I uh, mentioned uh, I think that 2014. I remember 2014 there was a there was an air crash of uh, Air Asia 2014. And I remember before, after that crash, and everyone uh, to show these uh, the next of kin and crying and everything. There's one particular video which is quite unique. What happened was they put in a video where someone uh, angry, or was someone getting upset. What happened was the aircraft actually took off half an hour earlier than usual. So after it took off, uh, a passenger came in and to do the check-in. And he was very upset because the aircraft has already took off, right? And I said, I have to go, you, you cannot do that, you cannot, I have to go, you have to pay me your money back and everything. And a half, an, half an hour after that, air crash, right? So that is, that is something that we think evil, right? Something that we think is evil, but because we don't have the wisdom of, because we don't know what the wisdom that Allah has. Another example. When I was, when I had this, uh, when my, my eldest daughter was about four, five, three years old, and uh, she was playing around and stuff, and then, and then she went to the kitchen, and she took the knife, and they were, ah, oh, we just, and then we go and then, and grab the, grab the knife and took it, right? And then, uh, of course, my daughter was crying and crying, and inside her mind was, what kind of father is this? I'm playing with my toy, and then he just, he took away my toy, you know, ah, oh, ah, give it back, right? Because why? Because she didn't have that wisdom. This is actually good. It's actually bad for her, right? So this is what happened if you, if you, someone come across and ask you this question, because we don't know what the wisdom of Allah, and you can give examples of something that happened to us, uh, something that we think happened uh, back to us, but we have, a, have uh, something in return, something's better in the future. Inshallah. So I guess that's probably what I have to say. I have, I promised my 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 friends that I have to run around eight forty-five. Very no sign. All right. So not many things we need to just to wrap up. Uh, we believe that Allah has has that knowledge before the creation even exists. That knowledge Allah put that in the preserve table tablet. Everything is in there. And then Allah, with His will and with His command, create the uh, the human being and all the existence, and everything runs based on what He thinks in there, what what He has already put into a preserved tablet, right? And the second part is preserved tablet is another takdir, another ka- and then takdir that comes when we in the womb, and the takdir that comes every year, which is during the alalatul uh, qadar, and the takdir or the decree of Allah that comes every day. I think that is, um, and we also discuss about the misconceptions and some of the common questions. I believe I have to answer your questions as well. All right, inshallah. Any, any non-difficult questions? <laughs> A brother idea of being in the topic. I'm just a, I'm just his messenger. <laughs>
Alhamdulillah. You cannot know. It is because of Allah. It is. It's not that Allah knows you are going to choose the bad thing, mm. but He is not intention. It's not His intention. It's not His intention. So you should yeah. take the bad step. He is clearly yeah. telling you that these are the. This is the exam, right? Yeah. To write the exam. So Allah wants you to write the exam and pass to go to the heaven. Yes. So if you don't write the exam correctly, so He has preferred the hell for you. So, but I think it is. Uh, it is not His intention. Yes. Yes. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. It's not, it's, you know, it's, it's on us. Yes, it is on us, yeah. Allah knows. He knows what you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Allah knows is one do. thing, but Allah wants us to do is another thing. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's the, that's the yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, very good comment. Yes. I mean, you surrounded people are. I mean, let's say your family and friends, good friends, they're not Muslim. So, so how, how come? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm the minority. Then how do you influence them? I mean, I mean, you say uh, Allah has already planned yeah. who believe or not believe. Yes. Now how, how to make them believe? I, mean, I don't want to. I want them, don't want to see them. They go to hellfire. So. Do you get that question? I th- how do you want to? I don't want my friends. Yeah. Okay, I'm unbeliever, right? Yes. Or family, they go to so Okay. I think, I think it's almost all believers want, if he really truth for his, uh, his belief, and he wants all his loved one to be in uh, the same belief as well. I think that if, if I love soccer, I want everyone in my family to love soccer, so football, you call it here, right? The same thing. Of course, you want your family to have uh, the best thing as well. And again, if there are people in our family that is not in belief yet, I think that is probably a task for us, uh, as well as uh, as well as an opportunity for us, yeah, uh, to give the message. Right? And not many people actually come to believe like 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 Abu Bakr al Siddiq, right? Just one word and then he's already convinced. There are many examples in Sahaba. Uh, one one particular sahabat that I always remember is uh, what's his name Umair Umair bin when he he was one of the uh, the late sahaba he came like probably uh, after the battle of uh, the battle of Badaf if I'm not mistaken and uh, he was actually planning to kill Rasulullah Sallallahu so he went up to Medina. And then with the sword that ready with, with poison and everything, we just we don't have to cut, we just just a small touch and people uh, <coughs> get killed. And then Rasulullah says, I know why you're coming here. Just three days ago, you talked to this person, A, B, C, D, and Allah, and Rasulullah detailed everything. And then the guy was just dumbfounded. No one, I didn't tell anyone about this. If you already know, there must be your really, then he said, Asadun Naka Rasulullah. Then his belief. So people who actually see Rasulullah Sallam, see him in action, see his belief, see his noble and everything, you still cannot believe until the last minute, until he wants to kill Rasulullah. So people can believe in this message like instantaneously, that people probably take years, probably even take like uh, the story of um, of uh, Brother Wail. Oh, it's so touching. I, when, I was, when I was reading, I was always going to cry. Uh, um, Abu Rahim as well in the US, his, his father, his father, his father just p- passed away, so we don't know, he's already sick and then and then suddenly he asked, can you teach me again La ilaha illallah and then keep saying La ilaha keep saying La ilaha and so many times you heard stories like this, right, 170 years of kufr and in just one day, right, there is, there is a hadith, the hadith about that Allah sent an angel and then angel will give the soul, uh, and then before the soul, uh, Allah tell the angels to give to write the decree of that when they die, when they all his his deed and everything. 
if you continue reading uh, the hadith, uh, that is, when I studied that hadith, uh, I was I was so scared. In the continue of the hadith, it says, "There's a slave of Allah who is doing the action of the people of Jannah until he very close to only one cubit, a hand span, and then he does." the actions of people of hellfire and that he died upon that and he go to hellfire and someone who spent the whole his life doing kufur and doing the actions of people of hellfire <coughs> until he's very close to the hellfire and then before he died he make an, a deed of a people of jannah and he died upon that he made jannah none of us safe So, sorry. Yeah, when I when I heard this hadith, it's just amazing. Right, just because we make da'wah, just we make straight da'wah, just because I talk and speak like this here, does that mean uh, jannah is guaranteed for us? We don't know. We just do put our best effort. That's all. Allah. And again, everything is already written in Law Mahapur, right? For the soul, sorry, for yeah. the soul which is written to be destined for the hellfire or to the Jannah, can it change through the dua? And anything can be changed, yes, through the dua, yes, we can. Uh, there is a narration about, because at the end of the day, this is already written in Allah, in, 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 sorry, in Law Mahapur, that this person originally destined to, because of the dua, because of the uh, amal, or whatever that we have. But again, we only go uh, to Jannah, to hellfire, uh, of, of course, we go to the Jannah because of the mercy of Allah, but of course because of our effort as well, not because only someone's dua, but probably that dua uh, will help us, grant us to do a good deed, because at the end of the day, it's a good deed that, that what we have. Can we and paraphrase so. it in a way that only the first level of Qadr is, is like under that The Azali one, yeah. The four one Azali, Umri, Sanawi, yeah, everything can can change the dua. Of course, not what has happened before. For example, you, for example, you born Pakistani, <laughs> Allah make dua, Allah make me American, and uh, of course <laughs> that you cannot make, <laughs> or make me whatever, <laughs> or, or make me uh, no, you cannot do that, right? <laughs> right. So, for example, so Allah has already uh, already decreed that you born as a as a male, and Allah make me female, then. Tomorrow you wake up, hello. No, no. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. So only what uh, in the future. And again, it has to come with the effort. And at, at the end of the day, it's all our effort, our it's sacrifice. Not, it's not only love and mahfuz. There are many other groups to marry. And there are Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sahib. Like Abba, Abba is like who will go to the Hajj for this. Yes, that is the uh, the Sanawi. So the law mafu is the number one, and then after that the umri, which is before we uh, give the soul to the womb, right? That is for the lifespan, the umri, and then the third one is sanawi, which is the um, sanawi means every time that comes through lalatul qadar, and during that lalatul qadar is that that is mentioned, uh, whether someone's gonna die, whether someone's gonna seek that year, whether he's gonna do hajj, and so on. And whether it's going to be raining uh, during that year and so on. And then the daily one, the, the yomi. The, the lifespan. Yeah, the lifespan. So, umuri of the lifespan, uh, the sanawi. Sanawi is the uh, sana, means annual, every year. Lalatul Qadar. So, what happened is, what is in the law mafus, been moved to your annual 
uh, recording. So that is when, uh, when the karena uh, zalul malaikat waruh, all the angels come and the ruh aruh means uh, uh, the angel of Jibril. All right. Anything? Anything else? Anything simple? Anything Insallah. So when they are first, we can change the color, right? <laughs> so start again? So with the efforts and the dua and the dua, uh, yes, yes. And we discuss that. Yeah. You can change. You can change the color of that, the umri one, the sanawi one, all I the. Mean, the truth can be changed. Yeah, but the azali, but the azali is already written. That means. For that year, you're supposed to, for example, get sick because of your dua, you don't get sick. But that event originally get sick, and then your dua and your effort, and you don't get sick. That event is already in Lauh Mahfuz. So that means that detail of events already in, written in Lauh like Mahfuz. Like you're getting younger every day, for example. Yeah, like you come here. <laughs> but but it, so there is no chance of amendment. Amendment. Because of Allah's knowledge, because of Allah, Allah, no, it's not okay. The term is not fixed. Because of Allah knowledge, Al Alim. Because of Allah wisdom, He knows what going to happen. He knows what you will think and whether you're gonna change your mind. He's already there. He knows that we will do this and suddenly we make toba, and Allah grant us forgiveness. He's already. It is already written. Because of His knowledge. But what he order you to do is not to follow this knowledge. What he order you to do is to make amal. What he order you to do is to uh, to do namaz, to do saum, to do this. That's what Allah orders you to do. So there is a choice for us. We, Allah has given the choice if you do this thing. Yeah. Or the two also been. Yes. Fixed. Yes. It's not fixed. Allah knows what you're going to choose. You have. <laughs> uh, oh, we, we already covered that. I think. Yeah, we already covered that. Those who understand, yeah. who want to understand this color. I think probably we need to, the recording then. <laughs> I need to run because in four minutes I need. I promise I have to run. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. For for the young one. Yeah. The daily one. Yes, we remembrance of Allah. Uh, when the day begins hmm. or when the night ends. Yeah. So can that, can that be interpreted that for Yomi Qadr, hmm. it's ordained once the day starts and once the, once the night ends? I, I have not read any particular reference when it's called the day. Uh, but I think... Uh, the reference just mentioned that the the decrease that Allah gives within a day. Mm. So when the day starts and ends, it didn't mention. I can I can look it up. I can look it up. But you see that there's, for example, there's an exchange of angels in the afternoon, the exchange of in the morning. Whether that's related to that, I don't know. I need to check on that. So I think we'll end with everybody for coming. Uh, please keep us in your uh, memory and listen to us. And uh, inshallah, we'll see you in the next one. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My Allah is the one, the one, the one, the one.